think a lot of times as writers, we need to redefine what success is for us. And it can't be wrapped up in numbers. It can't be wrapped up in social media reach because those things change. Facebook might go down tomorrow. Now you're not successful? No, you wrote, you, you put yourself out there. You were disciplined like you did what God told you to do. Welcome to Beloved Women with me, Christina Patterson, where we encourage, equip, and empower women in the love of Jesus Christ and the truth of God's word. For free Bible study resources and to join our worldwide sisterhood, be sure to visit belovedwomen.org. Hello, beloved, and welcome to Beloved Women with me, Christina Patterson, where we encourage, uplift, and equip women in the love of Jesus Christ and the truth of God's word. So excited to be here with you today again with my girl Kia Stevens from Entrusted Women because we are in part two of our three-part series yes. to help equip and grow Christian communicators. So in our first video, we talked about how to get started as a Christian writer or blogger. If you haven't seen that video, be sure to go and check that one out after, once you get the chance. Today's video, we are going to talk about how to grow and develop as a Christian writer or blogger. So maybe you've already started writing, you have a blog, but how can you become better in this area? How can you grow in this area and develop? That's what we are gonna talk about today. So to get us started, Key is gonna give us the first tip that we can implement to become a better Christian writer or blogger. Awesome, so the first thing that we think you should do is to set writing goals. So in the first video, we were kind of talking about start, just start wherever you are, start right. writing um, and begin to develop your craft. But once you have started and you've developed your craft, you need to get in more of a rhythm. So it's good to create an editorial calendar if you haven't. And basically an editorial calendar is going to span the entire year and you can establish your frequency, how often you want to write, and what you're gonna be writing about. So with your frequency, you wanna determine some categories that you write in. Maybe you write about fitness, faith, and fun with your family. So then you might create a calendar that has Monday is fitness, Wednesday is faith, Friday is fun. And that's your writing regimen. And so you want to know like how many words you're gonna be writing. Are you writing 500 words, a thousand words and so forth. And, and the more you write, the more your stamina, because it mm -hmm, does take mm -hmm. stamina to write lengthier posts will grow and increase. That's one way to begin to set some writing goals. And I think as you write for others, that will also stretch you in terms of writing. I know Cena and I used to joke um, <laughs> about I believe, we, we were writing Ooh, for I believe, and their the word book. count went from, it was like, was it like it almost, it almost doubled. Uh, yeah. It, no, it used to be 700. It used to be 700, 700? was like the minimum. Oh. It was 700 words, and I was like, cool. And then it it almost doubled. Well, no, it went to 700 to 50. Why is 2,500? I'm thinking 2,500. No, 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 nothing was ever. That, that's okay, almost a chapter. Far, of but book. it felt like 2,500. But it, it the, the, it felt the, like it almost doubled. And I was, I was ready to just give up because I, I, I like, I like to be concise, like, just, you know. But and I was like, no, I'm not gonna give up. And I stuck to it. And I, I wrote those. I think it was maybe it was 1,300 was the minimum. And when I tell you, I, you got 1,301 words, <laughs> I, that's what you got for me. And it stretched me so much. Right. And when I had another opportunity to come along and they were like, oh, it's only 500 words. I was like, Psh. Don't you do it. He was like, Kia, Kia, you said you could sneeze that out. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> I did not say that. <laughs> you said that. You said you could sneeze 500 words out. But the but point I mean, is, after we have been through, I mean, we have been through the boot camp. Ooh, the yeah. Christian writing boot camp. <laughs> So with anybody else that come along and they're like 500, 700 words, it's like, oh, I can do that easy, you know? Yeah, yeah. I can get that to you tonight. But we had to start somewhere. 500 words was a lot for me at one point. Right. And just having to build my muscle up to get to that. Right. But creating a plan, especially if right. I'm working on a specific project or if you're, you're blogging, you want to say, okay, I want to write on Mondays, you know, and setting the time to be able to do that and blocking that time off and taking it seriously and say for these two hours on Mondays, I'm just going to write. I'm going to turn my phone off. Mm -hmm. I'm going to turn off my notifications and I'm, and whatever comes out, I'm just going to write. 
It doesn't have to be perfect. Don't let that stop you, but just write and come up with a schedule to help you do that. Because I, I've seen in my personal life that when I write things down, I'm more prone to actually accomplish them than opposed mm-hmm. to just thinking in my head, well, I'll just write on Monday. It's like, no, I'm going to put it down on my calendar from two to four. I'm going to write and this is what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. That's really That's good. So good. Yeah. Our next point, as far as how to develop and grow as a Christian writer or blogger, and that is to get accountability because you can write it down, right? And it'll be two o'clock and you'll be looking at it. But if you know that someone <laughs> else knows that you're supposed right. to be doing it, right. then you're going to be more prone to actually do it even more. So, writing it down, but also having accountability. And, and this seemed like so long ago, Kia, but I remember I was writing a book. I'm still writing this book. Jesus, you help me. Um, but <laughs> I'm still writing this book, but when I was getting the most progress done in this book was when Kia would call me every Friday morning on her way to BSF and she would say, you up? And I'd be like, yeah, I'm up. And I would spend an hour, hour and a half before my kids got up and I would write. Yeah. And then the love conference came and everything else came and it got kind of, we got kind of I can still call way. you if you want me to call you. I you will have to call me this year because I have to finish that book this year. That is okay. on, my, I wrote it down. And so you're right. I need to get some accountability. And so the accountability, you know, can be consistent. I think it's better when it's consistent, and especially if it's you helping someone else too. It's both you guys helping each other. Like, okay, have you wrote your thousand words today? So when you know that, that someone's going to check up on you, you're a little bit more prone to do it. And even if it's just you sharing on social media, you know, you, you put yeah. it out there and say, hey, I'm writing a book. I got to get this done. You know, now people know. So they're expecting, okay, let me go ahead and do that, you know, and put, and that pressure is good for you. I think yeah, it's good I, if you want to develop and grow. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, no, I, I was saying I'm thinking of a particular writer in the Entrusted Women Facebook group, and she when she was writing her book, she would just come on Facebook and say, 1,500 words done. Yeah. 500 words done. And you would just be like, what? I'll be literally because I'll be like, man, I need to write my book. Too. Right, right. But I mean, she kept putting it out yeah. there just like, this is how many words I got done. This is how many. I think when you're, when you're talking about writing a book, although I've only done ebooks and I too have been working on a book for a very long time. And that's okay. Writer. But I think it's good to give yourself incremental goals as opposed to having big chunk goals because big chunk goals look like a big old elephant you Ooh. know and it's like how am i eat that elephant i don't know he's big he is right. really big you right. know but if you say we're going to do the trunk today or we're going to do one leg yep. today and then we'll do the next leg i think that that is most beneficial to do small chunks yeah so take time out to plan that out i got a whole book to write okay is it 10 it's 10 chapters okay when are you going to write this chapter okay when are you going to read or study for this chapter and just kind of break it down and when you're going to do it and don't feel so much pressure that like, Oh, if I don't get it done, it's the end of the world. It's not, you know, you just adjust, adjust the plan, adjust the accountability as necessary. And start back over, you know, like both of us, I think we have confessed in this episode that we have books that we have not written. Um, Oh, so we need to start back over. That's going to be our next video. Confessions of a Christian writer. Well, I don't want to be on it. Get somebody else. You have to be on that one. Oh, no. It got to be me and you. (laughs) Okay. Before we talk about the last, the third and final tip to become a better Christian writer, I want to share with you about Kia's organization called Entrusted Women, because if you need some accountability, you will find some there. Tell us a little bit about Entrusted Women and how that could potentially be a great opportunity for a Christian writer to find accountability. Sure. So Interested Women was created to increase and create opportunities for Christian women communicators of color. And we do that through four tenants, support, connect, equip, and encourage. And it's a great place for writers of any at any stage in the game to come and find some accountability. We are often posting writing opportunities in the group. I know several of the ladies have connected offline and are getting ladies to help them with their craft, to help critique their writing. And then we have a conference coming up. It's for writers, for speakers, for leaders, and business owners. And we're going to specifically be looking at, we have several sessions for for writing. One is the things that writers writers should know, every writer should know. We're going to talk about writing for a publication 
education, how to grow your audience through guest posting. So just basic things that may or may not be common knowledge and we're going to be sharing how you can get better and we're also going to have a publishing agent a literary agent javon bolden of embolden media group is going to be there to work with writers that are further along in their craft and they are looking to either self-publish or publish traditionally so i'm really excited about the wide range of opportunities for writers at every stage of, of, of the journey, of the writing journey. That is super great. And I'm so excited because I'm going to be there. Woo, I'm, woo, I'm woo. Gonna be, I'm going to be speaking on YouTube and also how to grow an email list. But, but and you're also your co co you got a co session yes, on um yep growing your audience through guest posting because yes. Christina has done that so successfully I think she well she has beloved women which is massive but then also you ha write for I believe for proverbs for women's ministry tools yeah I had am I forgetting yeah. something. <laughs> I think that's it for right now. I've been she might have to something up her sleeve I don't know about. <laughs> we all know this about Christina. But yeah, I'm going to be talking. And that and and guest posting has been huge for me. It's been huge not only to develop my craft, but also to grow the reach of beloved women. And it's been very helpful for me. So I'm going to be teaching on that as well. But I'm super excited to sit in on the other sessions that you'll have as far as how to become a better writer and speaker because I'm still developing myself. And so I'm just as excited to come to Entrusted Women Conference as an attendee as I am a speaker. And I hope to see you there. Now, as we think about how to become a better Christian blogger and writer, the last tip that we want to give you is to celebrate the small victories. Yes. It is super easy to kind of just always focus on what you're not or what you haven't felt like you've accomplished yet or what you haven't felt like you've done. But if you're writing at all, celebrate that, you know? If you are encouraging people in any kind of capacity, celebrate that because that matters. It's so easy to kind of get caught up in the numbers or, oh, you know, my blog is not reaching this many people or my social media account's not reaching this many people. I don't feel like I'm really an author yet because I haven't been traditionally published or something. But if you self-publish, you need to celebrate that. That is huge. It is huge. you write starting a blog <laughs> and writing a blog post, submitting a guest post, even if it doesn't get accepted, having the, right. courage. I, having the courage. This is a whole nother video, but Kia, when you were talking about, you know, who I write for and stuff, I, I don't know why, but I merely thought of when I first started writing all the rejection letters, I sent so many more guest posts out that were rejected than got accepted. But celebrating the fact that man you had the courage to do that and they didn't accept it so there were there were a lot of articles that I was like well they didn't accept it I'll just put it on my personal blog and someone was still encouraged by it but find the good in your journey don't wait until you feel like I've arrived whatever that might mean I think a lot of times as writers we need to redefine what success is for us and it can't be wrapped up in numbers it can't be wrapped up in social media reach because those things change. Facebook might go down tomorrow. Now you're not successful? No, you wrote, you, you put yourself out there. You were disciplined like you did what God told you to do. And so to celebrate those small victories. Yeah, yeah. I, I had a situation, I guess maybe the beginning of the year, because I'm kind of in a transitional place, changing some of my online websites and things like that. And just kind of in a quandary, like, Lord, what am I gonna do here? How am I gonna rearrange this? And I got a text message from a friend who I hadn't spoken to in maybe like a seven months or so. And then she shared with me that she had been diagnosed with cancer. And I, I didn't know any of that, that she had breast cancer. She was currently undergoing chemo. And then she said, I came across one of your blog posts mm. and it really encouraged me. And and she was like, don't stop writing. Don't stop writing. And I was, I just held the phone and just, <laughs> ooh, 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 I just cried, you know, because uh, here I was feeling in a quandary a little bit about my own writing journey. And then realizing that at the same time I was in a quandary, someone was being encouraged. And I think that's where sometimes you know, social media can cause us to get it twisted because we're seeing how successful we are, but it's not, that's not God's success. 
God's success is sharing the gospel, encouraging somebody who's at their end, you know, seeing a marriage restored or seeing a mother who feels discouraged with rearing her son say, I can go the extra mile or, you know, I have faith to believe that God can. That is the success for a Christian writer. So I definitely wanted to say that that was huge. That was huge, yeah. you know, that when I find myself, you know, maybe discouraged because sometimes you do get discouraged on this journey that I can look back and say, you know what? Let me go the extra mile. You know, if there's a possibility that somebody who's at their end, somebody that's like, I'm ready to quit and give up, might get these words. And if they do get them and they decide to go a, another step further, it's a win. That is a victory that, that we all can celebrate. That's amazing. That's a, that, that's a great way. I hope y'all have to that. tell you about that. I, I yeah, I, I, you didn't tell me about that. That's, and it's so funny because those moments I feel like, like in your situation, always happen when you're like discouraged and you're ready to quit. And then you get that note from somebody that's encouraged by your writing. You're like, I see you got thank you. You got to like shift that perspective right. and God be like, you got off track a little bit there. You know what I'm saying? This is what it's really about. So just, you know, if you really want to grow and develop as a Christian writer or blogger, you got to keep your perspective and your focus correct. And that's on God. And that is that he's called you to do this and that you are doing his work and that he has your back. I really hope that this video encouraged you to continue in your work for writing for God or blogging for God or putting that book out there for God and for his kingdom. And that's what it's all about. Again, this is part two of a three-part series that we're doing here for Christian communicators. So be sure to check out the link in this description to view the rest of those videos. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, be beautiful, be blessed, and be loved.